Hello, boys, girls, everyone. Uh, it's another GEM facepalming episode here. Uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, like, I can hear your responses. What the hell? Um, anyway, here we are again. Um, homebrew races. We're bringing you those options. We're bringing you those frustrations to your RPG table. Uh, to pick something unique, rare, a race. Probably just as equally interesting would be the rare and unique story behind that that character or the story that unfolds from it so anyway hello everyone oh random person oh no he's gone okay so here we go uh want to play something half ooze some sort of character with ooze traits uh stick stick around uh we're gonna get to this um uh, I like oozes and slimes. They're they're pretty cool. They're fun for uh, dungeons and and things like that. Uh, I really didn't start getting into uh, learn more about them and, until I came across uh, D and D and you know obviously. Uh, but uh, read a lot of novels, particularly within Forgotten Realms, and I was very intrigued by the uh, story uh, or the god who has worshippers of slimes and oozes. And, uh, a lot of that plays out in one of Lisa Smeedman's books here. Uh, Dealings with the with the drow, the Pathion, and and such. Uh, in one part of the uh, series of, 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 of those books there, uh, a host of different slimes and oozes of different types uh, infiltrate this uh, drow uh, area and completely overwhelm it pretty pretty awesome but uh a lot of the other sort of temptations to 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 want to do this uh to want to create a ooze race uh the fascination with oozes and slimes uh forgotten realms of course once again um faith and pathion book uh really old old book now but uh I really liked all the Pathions in here. They're pretty cool. I haven't I haven't had a chance to get uh, inner sea gods yet, um, but most of my time uh, thinking about Darklands races or uh, inspirations from, from from old from 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 the past, uh, particularly with oozes and slimes, I refer to, the, to this book. I really like the uh, one god in here within the drow or drow. Pa Pathion, uh, Gonadar, uh, someone who takes the, the, the guise of a, of a drow, they don't know if he actually is a drow or not, but he has servants of, uh, oozes and slimes and jellies and ropers and aboleths and some drow, uh, but I thought the story and some of the, uh, dogmas and History with him is pretty cool. Uh, didn't really see anything for Pathfinder with some sort of slime herald or anything like that, but if you were to take a look to find some sort of ooze, slime sort of race, uh, I found on the Paizo message boards they had one for the Mercur Mercurial someone made. Uh, also from 3.5 I saw someone made something called a Slime Child. Uh, some third-party pub publishers out there, um, they have some things with, uh, or at least one person had one with, uh, with, uh, slimes. So, uh, getting a lot of in inspiration, a, lo a lot of this from different, uh, sources, uh, I've made my own. So, here we go. Uh, I'm calling them Mercurial, uh, something clay-like flesh, something liquefied, some sort of semi-liquid state. Uh, something that constantly flows but always retains a vaguely hu uh, humanoid shape, uh, allowing the wear, uh, <clears throat> allowing the ability to wear gear and uh, items and swords and all that stuff. So, uh, appearing as though a solid hu uh, humanoid. So, uh, what we got here for the Mercurial? Uh, they're total 17 racial hit points. Type: They are aberration. Uh, with the Mercurial subtype. 
so Aberrations 3. Mercurial Subtype, that is a homebrew subtype that I made. I'm um, giving that 10 points. Part of that subtype, um, they get a plus 4 racial bonus on escape artist checks because they're so loose. Uh, they're unstable in their in their mass, so they should have some relative ease on uh, trying to escape some sort of a grapple, trying to escape some sort of bonds. Uh, mercurials are flexible regardless of their actual size and mass. They can move through areas at least half their size with no penalty for squeezing. Uh, they can also move through a space at least one quarter of their width using pen using the penalties for squeezing through a space at least half their width. Uh, they are immune to critical hits, paralysis, precision damage, and sleep. That's a pretty big one there. Uh, they can breathe and eat, but do not sleep. Unless they want to gain some beneficial effect from this activity, meaning that uh, they want to uh, sleep in order to regain spells. Uh, but sleep is not required to survive or stay in good health. So that's just inf information on the subtype, and I weighted that at a cost of 10. Uh, medium in size. Billy score modifiers, I went with specialized. What is all this crap I'm talking about, plus one and everything else? Well, many of you already know, but the advanced race guide. The race builder section in the back of the book is what I use for uh, applying a theme of balance to this. Uh, keeping this within some sort of frame of uh, rules. Uh, so anyway, ability score modifiers are one with specialized, uh, which gives you the ability score array of plus two to dex, plus two to con, minus two to charisma. That's a plus one cost. And the description for that, uh, mercurials are quick in body and mind, but are inherently strange. Uh, let's see, languages, standard. Uh, feet and skill racial traits. I went boneless. And what it is, they can move in ways that others cannot. They gain a plus two racial bonus on acrobatics and escape artist skill checks. In addition, uh, they gain a plus one bonus on combat maneuver uh, and combat maneuver defense. Since they don't really have any bones. And they get dark vision for, for no cost. Due to either you want to uh, say that's from Aberration or the Mercurial subtype, but I'm going to say that's from Aberration since they get dark vision with that. And then I made a, a list of different alternate racial traits. Um, things such as Clarity, where they lack the coloration of, its, of others of its kind. Usually they would have some sort of color to them, slight it may seem, maybe blue, green, purple, red. Um, but if you went with the alternate racial trait of clarity, uh, you would swap out that plus four racial bonus on escape artist checks and instead apply that plus four racial bonus on stealth checks based on sight. I also went with engulf, uh, similar to the monster ability there. Uh, they can engulf a creature smaller than itself with a successful grapple check. Uh, you must be uncloaked and unarmored to attempt this ability, of course. Uh, Mercurials cannot make other attacks during a round in which they engulf. Targeted creatures can make attacks of opportunity against, against Mercurials, but if they do so, they are not entitled to a saving throw against the engulf attack. Those who do not attempt attacks of opportunity can attempt a reflex save, which is DC 10 plus one half the character level plus strength modifier to avoid being engulfed. On a success, they are pushed back or aside, target's choice. Engulfed opponent, uh, opponents gain the pin condition and are in danger of suffocating and are trapped within the Mercurial's body until they are no longer pinned. This racial trait replaces boneless. Maybe <clears throat> as an alternate racial traits there, part of that id or id ooze a more of a psy uh, psionic type where uh, some mercurials manifest psy psychic energy and are able to mentally communicate with any creature within 30 feet with whom it shares a language. Otherwise, this ability is identical to the telepathy ability. This racial trait also replaces boneless. So, uh, I 
call this it ooze, but really it's limited to tele uh, tele uh, telepathy, which is a uh, homebrew. Rubbery. If you want for an alternate, uh, they can gain DR5 slash inner piercing and take half damage from fall from falling. Uh, this would also replace boneless. Then I have suction, where Mercurial secretes a, a natural adhesive. Gain a climb speed of 20 feet and a plus 8 racial bonus on climb checks. In addition, they receive a plus 2 racial bonus on grapple checks. Uh, your base speed of movement, though, is reduced to 20 feet when selecting this trait. So that's what I have for some alternates here. Um, also made some feats. Uh, but they get more into the actual mercurial racial traits. We'll continue along here. Uh, moving aside from the all alternates. Uh, in case you're wondering, I haven't decided whether I'm going to give the Mercurial some sort of um, option to select um, some sort of acid offense, um, because then you would have to look at what about the gear that they were wear, the things that they come in contact with, uh, there would be some sort of dissolving nature to those, uh, then you would get into like the br uh, broken condition with items. And what I saw for what someone did for something called a slime child, uh, they called it involuntary digestion, where anything a slime child touches or holds slowly dissolves as its body feeds on whatever it comes in contact with, dealing 1d3 points of acid damage each round of contact. It does not harm rock, metal, or glass. This ability cannot be turned off, and the slime child can be poisoned by simply, simply touching poisons that require ingestion. So... Uh, you have some sort of leeway there, uh, choosing, you know, some sort of rock type, metal type, or glass, uh, maybe armor, perhaps, uh, glass, now I'm thinking of, like, uh, Skyrim or something, but, uh, yeah, that, that, that presents its chal chal challenges, um, unless you're gonna be, like, a monk. That would be pretty, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I haven't decided on that yet. But alright. I went off on a tangent there in a different direction. Here we go. Coming back to the actual Mercurial's racial traits. I talked about the plus 2 to Dex, plus 2 to Kind, minus 2 to Charisma. Uh, but let's get into the meat and potatoes of this race. Uh, the Half Ooze. Mercurials are aberrations with the Mercurial subtype. Mercurials are immune to critical hits, paralysis, precision damage, and sleep. They also have a plus four racial bonus on escape artist checks. They're flat, flexible regardless of their size, as I, as I talked about with squeezing. Um, let's see here. Mercurials breathe even, but do not sleep. Talked about that. Uh, medium, normal speed, dark vision, 60 feet. Talked about boneless. Uh, here we go. Sighted. A Mercurial can perceive light coming from one direction at a time using a portion of its body's surface, in much the same way a human can perceive light using eyes. Unlike most uses, a Mercurial is not blind, doesn't have blind sense, is not immune to visual attacks, and can be flanked. Uh, unstable. A Mercur Mercurial's body chemistry and surface tension exists in a state of tenuous equilibrium. Unlike most uses, a Mercurial is not immune to poison or stunning. Because its form is so easily displaced from its normal state, the Mercurial also lacks immunity to po polymorph effects. Vaguely humanoid. Though made of ooze, a Mercurial's body retains a vaguely humanoid shape the majority of the time. A Mercurial can we wield and wear gear as if it were a humanoid creature and has the same magic item body slots as a humanoid creature. Accordingly, uh... What you could say about them, maybe uh, this race, maybe they practice advanced forms of alchemy, trying to attain some sort of form of uh, immortality, and that uh, went horribly wrong, and they turned into this ooze. Uh, perhaps you could uh, say that this race is uh, linked to uh, some sort of magical experimentation from a ooze progenitor, whether a uh, super powerful uh, wizard was involved 
that did experimentations and uh, you were a, a, a uh, result of that so um, but yeah Mercurial while com comprised of a flown clay like flesh or semi liquid uh, state uh, you tend to retain a vaguely, vaguely bipedal shape the result of an inherently humanoid mind imposing its will upon a mutable alien body. A mercurial form undergoes constant distortions that define it, its baseline shape, especially when moving quickly, but these changes are fleeting. The mercurial always snaps back into a roughly humanoid form. Mercurials can and do wear clothing, wrapping themselves in humanoid attire to give their bodies added definition and to get a feel for their lost humanoid heritage. Uh, they can also carry and manipulate gear in the same manner as a biped with opposable thumbs. This allows Mercurials to pursue their traditional pastimes of alchemy. If they were going to be some sort of former al alchemist that uh, changed their bodies in this drastic fashion. So, there you go. Um, languages, I would suggest that they all begin speaking common. Uh, high intelligence scores, they should be able to choose any language they want except... Uh, Druidic. So, uh, that's what I got for this. Um, to go over some of the feats now. Um, Amph Morris body, mercurial feet. Uh, you impose your will to new extensions of your slime nature. Prerequisite, also, uh, you have to be mercurial uh, benefit. As a full round action, you can melt into a puddle of goo to move through tiny cracks and holes. You begin to enter the cracked or hole or other small entrance on the next round but your dark vision is replaced by blind sight so you have blind sight at 20 feet uh, in doing so you become immune to gaze attacks visual effects illusions and other attack forms that rely on sight unfortunately all gear is left behind as the mercurial undulates for, uh, forward Let me fix that spell in there all right, uh, elongation. Defy the distortions of your shape. Prerequisites, uh, mercurial, benefit. As a swift action, you lengthen your limbs on command, doubling your natural reach or height before your limbs spring back to their original position at the end of your turn. Um, these other two I grabbed from D20 PFSRD. Uh, Something from Illyria Pub, uh, Publishing, uh, uh, since they made some sort of race called a Squally, some sort of slime type of creature. So I'm using two of their uh, feats that I saw that were posted on the uh, site there. Uh, one called Evade Grasp, where once per day you can make a combat maneuver roll to bring you... Uh, once per day, when an opponent makes a success, successful combat maneuver roll... To bring you into a grapple, that check fails. So you get your one free free chance uh, once per day. Uh, then there's another one called Liquify. Uh, where prerequisites you need the Evade Grasp feat. Uh, once per day as a swift action, you can automatically escape a grapple or free yourself from all bonds or sh shackles. So there's that feat. And you need both of those um, to become uh, a Slime Lord, which is a Prestige class. I also saw that on D20's PFSRD site, and uh, the source is from Illyria Publishing, uh, to one of their books that they put out there. Uh, but all the information was generously uh, put up there, so you can check that out. I'm going to allow the Slime Lord in my, in my game, and I've made some edits to it uh, based because based on that my race is uh, different the wording and some of the immunities and things that it's uh, weak to are drastically different from some of the other uh, different types out there that people made so I had to make a lot of changes to uh, some of the prestige class fe uh, features of the sl uh, sl uh, slime lord um, but I'm also going to go with uh, a bestiary uh, entry for the Mercurial as, as well. And I've made them as a alchemist. 
But I still gotta add some physical physical descriptions and some uh, back back uh, backstory to them. So, but anyway, I got I got this here for you if you were interested in ooze creatures. I will uh, get the video posted here shortly, and uh, as you're watching, and um, put all the information below, so you can check that out, make any changes that you want. Uh, be prepared for the audible sound of all the face palming at your uh, table. And uh, see you next time.